Good morning everyone and welcome to our service from St Hilda's Rectory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. And also with you. Last Sunday I attended the service at Durham Cathedral for Steve Edge who was ordained deacon along with 15 other men and women. Ordination services are always an awesome occasion. It's not just the glorious setting of the cathedral with the breathtaking music. It's the magnitude of the commitment and the promises the candidates are making in their service to God. And for those of us who are already ordained, it's sometimes a salutary reminder of the promises that we once made and have endeavoured to carry out over the years. Before the ordinands make their declarations, they are reminded by the bishop of the nature of the service they are committing themselves to. Let me read out some of the words that the bishop says. Deacons are called to work with the bishop and with the priests whom they serve as heralds of Christ's kingdom. They are to proclaim the gospel in word and deed as agents of God's purposes of love. And then later on this. Deacons are to seek nourishment from the scriptures. They are to study them with God's people that the whole church may be equipped to live out the gospel in the world. They are to be faithful in prayer, expectant and watchful for the signs of God's presence as he reveals his kingdom among us. So as you can see, to be ordained deacon is a serious commitment and not one that should be undertaken lightly. Proclaiming the gospel in word and deed may sound simple, but it can also take a lot of courage especially when you know that your message is not welcomed by some and may even result in undesirable consequences in your own life. Be that as it may, those whom God chooses, we are told he also equips for service. As we worship together this morning, let's hold our own desire to be God's voice in the world before us a voice that is ready to sing his praise and to proclaim his victory over death. Our first hymn this morning is Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven and Voices Raise.
going to light the candle now for today's service. Jesus Christ is a light to the world, a, a light, light no, no darkness, darkness can quench. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today. Creator God, you made us in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. King Herod heard of it. For Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the Baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah. And others said, It is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself, had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet... Out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring him John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter 
and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Here ends the reading. Let's see who's awake this morning. I've got a question for you. Who sang the words, always let your conscience be your guide? I'll give you a minute to think. Well, if you're still wondering, it was Jiminy Cricket who sang the song to Pinocchio. Always let your conscience be your guide. An easy ditty to sing but a much harder task to actually take on board. Let me ask you to think about the last time you said or did something that you bitterly regretted afterwards. We've all been there. You might even have known at the time that it was wrong, but you still went ahead and said and ordered it anyway. Or perhaps you acted impulsively before your conscience was able to kick in. And then you've suffered afterwards when your conscience won't give you any peace. In our reading from the Gospel today, King Herod suffers from a bad conscience, and so he ought. Because he had had John the Baptist executed during a drunken night when he was being entertained by his wife's daughter, Salome. Just to get things right, right straight, right from the start, this King Herod is Herod Antipas, the son of King Herod the Great, who had had all the baby boys slaughtered in an attempt to kill Jesus. So it's not the same man, but unfortunately he had inherited the same murderous tendencies as his father. In fact, the whole family is a dysfunctional nightmare, driven by jealousies and by incestuous behaviour. Herod the Great, the murderer of the baby boys, had murdered three of his own sons because he was afraid of them. Herodias, the mother of Salome, was the granddaughter of Herod the Great. She had married firstly one of her uncles before being seduced and married by another uncle, Herod Antipas. And her daughter from her first marriage, Salome, the dancer, was married to her uncle, a family worthy of the most salacious soap opera. Unfortunately, they were also extremely powerful as well as immoral, a dangerous combination and it would have take an extremely courageous person to confront them with the immorality of their behaviour. Q. John the Baptist, a man who was the polar opposite of Herod in every way. John, as we know, was an aesthetic, a man who had turned away from the ordinary comforts of a home life in order to seek God's will, God's word, in the desert places. John's calling was to hear and speak God's truth, regardless of how it was received. And this meant telling the truth about Herod's adulterous behaviour. Herod has John imprisoned in the dungeon of his Paris palace. But he does seem to have a strange fascination with him, this man who is his total opposite. And we are told that he liked to visit John, to talk to him. Perhaps from John, he caught glimpses of a different way of life. On the other hand, Herodias, Herod's wife, absolutely hated John with a passion. How dare this uncouth, unkempt man criticise her behaviour, her marriage? Perhaps she also resented her husband's visits to talk with John. So she seeks revenge, using her daughter to trap Herod into making a rash promise that he then has to keep in order to save face. John is brutally murdered, decapitated, and his head presented on a plate at the banquet. 
So John is dead. But as we know from today's Gospel reading, that is not the end for Herod. His first reaction to the news of Jesus's ministry in Galilee is that he is John, risen from the dead. A reaction that suggests that Herod's conscience has been at work, that perhaps he is haunted by the great injustice he inflicted on John. Herod, however, is not one to learn from his past mistakes. He carries on with the same pattern of behaviour, believing that if he kills off the voices that call to him to acknowledge his sinfulness, his conscience will be silenced. And so, as we know, Herod once again plays a part in the execution of a holy and blameless man when he hands Jesus over to be crucified a couple of years later. Perhaps Herod did learn after that, that the voice of God can never be silenced. Perhaps after that, when he heard the news filtering through that Jesus had been raised from the dead, he started to actually believe that God had a power and a will even stronger than his and of the entire Roman Empire. Because God's voice can never be silenced. God's truth will always rise above the lies, the deceit, the corruption of this world and shine its light into our souls. We know there will always be ruthless and immoral leaders in this world who think that they are above and beyond the reach of God's holy justice. Well, one day they will find out how badly they have been deceiving themselves. But in the meantime, let's pray. Let's pray hard for those people who have the faith and the courage to stand up and speak God's word, God's truth, whatever the consequences of that may be. May they be surrounded by God's protection. May they have faith in the knowledge that God himself has chosen them, claims them as his children, and one day will gather them into his kingdom, where they will be received as the heroes they truly are. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and everlasting God, your ascended Son rules over all the nations. By his gospel, pour out your Holy Spirit on your people. Open our lips to speak your word with boldness to one and all. By the mercy we have received in your Son, wholly shape our lives in love, so that all we say, all we do, may bring you glory and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kind Father, Move all congregations to sound forth the call to repentance without fear. Keep them faithful in their proclamation of your word, especially in the face of those who oppose it and refuse to hear you. Raise up new workers for your harvest fields to speak your word as we wait for the coming of our Lord and the fulfilment of your every promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ruler of the nations, protect and care for our country. Guide and strengthen Elizabeth, our Queen, and all those set in authority under her. Bless all public servants as they attempt to provide safety and stability for our society. Give them courage to protect the free exercise of religion and to honour and protect every life from conception to natural death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, your grace is sufficient for us, and your power is made perfect in weakness. Into your loving hands we commend all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, especially your servants David Webster, Jill Brown, Margaret Randall, Gillian and Jared Porter, and Ian Davler, and all those who have asked our prayers, and all those whom we now name in the silence of our hearts. Grant them patience in their afflictions, and trust in your wisdom. Strengthen their hope as they look forward to the final healing that awaits all your children at the day of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great I am, source of all life. Send your Holy Spirit to those who mourn the death of loved ones. We remember Angela and Karen as they mourn the death of their mother, Joyce Milburn, and Gillian and Jared as they mourn the loss of their unborn baby, Leon. Comfort them with the promise of your son that as in Adam all die, even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever, ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A couple of notices for this week. Um, we will be opening the church for private prayer this afternoon between two and three o'clock and having a Holy Communion service on Wednesday at 10.30. I know that it is uh, Jeff Nelson's birthday this week on Tuesday and if it also happens to be your birthday this week, I hope you have a lovely day. A big thank you to everyone who has helped put together today's online service. Now let's ask for God's blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn this morning, Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. <laughs> 